Hey guys, so uh, in the United States, actually one in four people may be carriers of the HPV virus. And many people might know that HPV, and you know, we're holding our little HPV viruses here, uh, is actually one of the uh, largest causes of lower ab abdominal cancers and cervical cancers. Um, I'm joined here with Prashant and Brennan, uh, who've also looked at one of the applications you say is oral uh, yes. cancers. Uh, so actually, as sexual trends have changed from more below the belt to above the belt, so has these cancers. So what's classically been a cervix or a bladder cell cancer has now turned into a mouth or a throat. Uh, so we're really seeing that 80% of these cancers of the mouth or throat are due to HPV, which is really surprising given the amount of cancers that come up from smoking and drinking and such. Yeah, and, and this is um, a project for you guys that uh, is also a personal project. I mean, you, you guys had a, a teacher who passed away recently uh, from uh, HPV, uh, and oral, oral cancer uh, specifically. Um, what, what brought about wanting to research this and, and how, um, you know, what, what were some of the, the uh, models that you used to, to base your research on? Yeah, so he was really the one. He was sorry. He was really the one who kind of got us into science in the first place, and he taught us about a lot of uh, things that we learned in our AP Biology class. And so we believe that if he had detected his cancer a lot earlier, it would have been a, it would have been a different story for him. And so that's how we wanted to get into the whole early detection process. And then in terms of actually getting into HPV research, we were reading this book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, in our AP Comp class, and we learned about the first known case of HPV causing cervical cancer. And so we learned about HPV, and in terms of it causing oral cancer and so we thought we may there's not a lot of research on these oral cancers and early detection for them so we figured we'd bridge that gap and, and there's not a lot of tests right now either or, or any tests right now for um, uh, oral, oral uh, stage HPV induced uh, cancers correct yeah there's no test there even even the predict uh, the preventative measures that are used for cervical and bladder cell cancers don't really work for those oral cancers like the HPV vaccine so this, this test is really useful for that. So tell us a bit about the test. Uh, you know, what was the methodology? How did, how did we uh, create something that was just really easily accessible? And then how does it work? Uh, so we just really repurposed an old procedure uh, for a new disease. So we used what's called FISH, which was actually used for Henrietta Lacks back in the 60s. That stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. And we were really just looking at chromosomes. So we were going down counting. So you're supposed to have two of each, but we looked for three of some and one of others. And that's because when HPV infects the cell, uh, in rare cases, its genome actually integrates into our genome. And that causes a a biological procedure called DNA mismatch repair to get all screwed up and then when mitosis happens your chromosome numbers actually switch right so we were able to visualize that under the microscope and then we could see as HPV would become more cancerous so your numbers of aneuploidy would also go up so then we were able to tell and create a threshold that once you're past that level of aneuploidy then we know it's going to turn cancerous so how do we collect the cells uh, just a rinse and spit sample so, so just think of mouthwash so so we take a mouthwash put a little in our mouth gargle it spit it out and then you guys take that down and then what what's the next process uh, in in the research so from diagnosis? there with those samples what we do is we then seed them onto slides and run them through a re-engineered protocol that we actually took from a bladder cell cancer test and completely remodified for this so it goes through a wash cycle because our mouths are super dirty with all the things that we eat and drink so we created a wash process for these and then we put in um, chromosomal probes that actually fluoresce under a microscope so we can actually visualize these aneuploid conditions and then from there we're able to look at them under the fluorescent microscope we're able to look at them under the microscope and so we're able to see those aneuploid conditions from there. Okay, and this is a relatively fast process. If, if, I, if I'm reading the graphs that you have here, <laughs> it doesn't take too long to actually get a result. No, not really. It takes about maybe an hour or two for, uh, for a single patient. It, and it's also cost efficient, correct? Yes, so for this test it's about $200 currently. Now, by comparison to other tests, I mean, right now it's pretty invasive for a cervical test, for um, a, you know, going through the, the, uh, the trachea and looking at a camera to count uh, precancerous or, or, or cancerous cells. You know, you're doing something affordable, uh, non-invasive, and you're also doing earlier detection, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's really unique about us is that you can do it in your home. So all you have to do is go online, our company is Access Genetics, and you just 
order the test, it comes a little saline rinse. You squish, you spit, you FedEx it back, and then you can know your results. So it's really easy, non-invasive, and it can we can tell you if it's going to turn cancerous before anyone else. Right. Uh, so really, people who have a high-risk strain of HPV in their mouth or throat, and most people don't even know they have it, right. should really be taking this test once every three months. So, so again, one in four people do have HPV, and there's certain strains that are higher risk for, mm -hmm. for throat and, and mouth cancers. So you're actually helping anybody who already knows that they have HPV, and even people that might not know if they have HPV, if they go and they find out later that they, they test positive on something in, in a, a regular screening, they can order your kit and know uh, ahead of time where they are in the spectrum of, of uh, you know, stage one, stage two, or, or precancerous, mm -hmm. um, and at least be able to monitor it uh, better uh, to help fight it when it does yeah. happen. And that's the most important thing with these cancers, especially from the mouth and throat, uh, because the biopsies and the treatment, if chemo doesn't work, it's uh, amputation, right. which is really hard for the mouth and throat area. So early detection is key to thwart any issue that comes up before it comes a problem. And so, so what's next on the horizon? I know this is going to be a, a, a big, uh, uh, you know, test that people are going to be interested in. Um, where can people find out more information about it? And when do you th expect this to be mass market? So actually, it has been mass marketed. About three weeks ago, we went on market and it sold a couple, of, about 170-ish units across the country. But um, as far as the next steps go, we want to drive this cost even further down because the predominant population infected with HPV tend to be from lower income families who can't afford these preventative measures. So we want to drive this cost down by automating the process so that it doesn't have to be a lab test that you take a rinse and spit and send it to a lab. It can be within a hospital and done within an hour. And then a patient can receive the results and a doctor can go from there. Awesome. Well, we're, we're excited to hear uh, about the research, the applications. We know there's going to be a ton of people that can actually benefit from earlier detection and, and making sure that, that uh, they get treatments uh, faster and sooner, uh, pre preventatively or uh, as, uh, as the, the disease might progress in their bodies. So uh, give these guys a, a hand. Uh, Prashant, Brennan, thank you very much for uh, joining us on Expedition Sim. HPV, get out of here. We'll see you soon.